good morning. Um, I'm uh, really glad to be here uh, with you. I'm really glad to share uh, some of the uh, topics I researched, I thought about, I, I write, wrote about, and uh, I hope I will be able to give some also introduction to the topic of values and why are they important for a family, for uh, fertility, and uh, for all the topics we are actually discussing today. Uh, I'm Domo Guedalbelo. I am a PhD student of sociology in Croatian Catholic University. So uh, I'll share my uh, screen so, uh, so you can see my presentation. So my topic is uh, values and fertility. I think actually it's a good topic to introduce you to all of these uh, topics. First, I will uh, try to define uh, values, uh, what's uh, in the, uh, define some uh, value theories and uh, then I will talk uh, more specifically about values and fertility uh, and I will show you some research um, on this uh, topic uh, and also at the end I will uh, tell you something about uh, values and fertility in uh, various countries. Uh, so uh, let's start. Um, first uh, I would like to uh, define values and uh, say why it's actually very important concept for any sociological research but also uh, research in any um, uh, other uh, social science. Uh, first, it has a very, really long history of uh, different uh, thinkers, different uh, researchers who uh, tried to define this value and could talk uh, about this concept but also who uh, Try, um, thought about it, uh, not everybody uh, really knew some specific definition, but from the uh, thoughts of uh, big thinkers such as Plato and Aristotle, we know that they said that happiness and virtue are greatest goals in life and biggest values. So, I mean, they didn't uh, define values, but they uh, obviously thought about it. Uh, also, humanists uh, thought that uh, hu uh, is human uh, like. Uh, uh, the, uh, the biggest um, value. So it, they basically introduced the concept of human dignity there. So uh, they also thought about uh, human as a value. Uh, and until 60s, uh, um, social sciences really focused on uh, values and it uh, used to be really important issue and still is today, basically. Uh, so there are many research, uh, you'll see it on my presentation. Uh, and uh, I mean, I will uh, just show you research about uh, relation between values and fertility and maybe values and family, but uh, there are, there is countless of research papers about uh, uh, values in different, uh, co in different uh, contexts. And uh, uh, I think that proves that uh, this really is a very important uh, topic. There are countless uh, implications uh, in all those researches. Sciences found a lot of correlations. Uh, values correlate with many concepts such as happiness, well-being, but also fertility, which is basically an uh, existential issue and issue I will talk about today. And basically, I would say that understanding values is understanding society because it correlates with so many important uh, concepts and it explains a lot of um, important concepts. And uh, a value, it, here is a, like uh, one definition that is probably mostly accepted of the values that is uh, conception, explicit or implicit, distinctive of an individual or a character of, of a group. Uh, of the desirable, which influences the selection from a viable uh, uh, modes, uh, means, and ends of action. So basically, their values push us to some direction. They lead us to a um, certain way, and they show us show us what way is right. I would just uh, like to uh, hi highlight the uh, word influences. The uh, so basically uh, it. Um, influences our lives in many different ways. Uh, I will just shortly say, you probably know about these value theories. One is Schwartz's uh, theory. He uh, identified 10 values uh, with certain um, criteria, 
he believed that values are beliefs, uh, that uh, they refer to desirable goals, uh, they transcend uh, specific actions and situations, so they're universal in our lives. Uh, there's many different criteria, I will not now um, read all of them, but uh, I recommend you to uh, uh, read his work and you can see how he came to these values. But what is important is that um, he believed that um, uh, certain values are more uh, co um, similar to one another and some are contradictory. So, for example, uh, security and tradition can have some similarities but because you can see they're uh, near one another on this uh, 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 picture. But, for example, uh, uh, power and universalism or uh, security or self-direction can be contradictory in some situations. That's why they are on different uh, parts of the, uh, this circle. Uh, but second uh, theory we'll talk even more about is uh, Inglehart and Weisel theory. Um, they identified uh, traditional values on, and secular ra rational values that are uh, like, according to this theory, um, like the opposites, so opposite sides of the spectrum, and uh, the survival values and self-expression values. Um, and uh, they uh, uh, thought about uh, uh, change, how values uh, change over time. So uh, they explained that uh, for example, uh, in agrarian societies, there were mostly traditional and survival values, but uh, when uh, they became more industrial, they became more uh, uh, se um, secular rational. And also when they uh, when the industrial service sector is uh, replaced with um, uh, service industry, uh, they also adapt self-expression values. So the idea is that they should a change in predictable ways. Now we can also discuss about all this, but uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, starting theory to talk, think about values as some um, and uh, how values actually changed over time and all consequences of these changes. Not some are good, but some are also not not that desirable. Um, uh, we have modernization theory. Uh, so basically. Uh, uh, the main idea of modernization theory is that socioeconomic development uh, is relatively predictable, uh, leads to relatively predictable uh, cultural changes. And uh, it it's, uh, leads to uh, the pat pattern that uh, first we have technological development, uh, which uh, leads to more specialized jobs, uh, more longer education, better living standard which leads, leads to some cultural changes such as uh, less uh, respect for authority, less um, support for gender roles, uh, some uh, less importance on sexual norms, and also this leads to less fertility for all of these reasons. So modernization theory definitely is a concept we need to see when uh, we, we talk about values. In second part, I will... Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, values and fertility and values and family first, actually. Uh, family used, uh, uh, traditionally is a very important institution for reproduction. However, in uh, and uh, historically, all everything that uh, basically uh, endangered these reproductions, uh, everything that wasn't good for reproduction, such as divorce, were, was socially sanctioned. Uh, however, in post-industrial society with the uh, rise of welfare state, many people saw family as less important there because uh, they thought that uh, welfare state can uh, uh, ensure a uh, better, um, um, uh, better conditions for parenthood uh, and uh, that family itself is not uh, that important. However, uh, many research says that uh, this uh, decline in uh, uh, valuing uh, family also led to some other uh, consequences that are not good for fertility and uh, family. Um, so, I mean, this is uh, like really for discussion. I mean, uh, so uh, we can, uh, but we can uh, um, see that uh, there are many consequences of this, that this is the fact that uh, in well, 
it's perceived that family is less important and uh, we can see what uh, consequences there are uh also um uh, there is uh, another topic when we are talking about family and values uh that uh, family is the very important for social uh, socialization of uh, values and there are several um, ways this happens i will not now go into details but uh, one is uh, for example uh, perception value similarity which is usually between a parent and child which is uh, uh, actually lower than sometimes the actual similarity is lower than it's sometimes perceived but however uh, children need to understand and to perceive a parents values to adapt them so it is uh, important also uh, parental uh, socioeconomic status uh, status can uh, uh, change uh, cognitive complexity of child, child's environment so child can ha have more stimuli if uh, parents are from wealthier family or something like this so it's also related to how, what values that are adopt so and also there is uh, some other interesting uh, effects that for example good relation between mother and child also um, uh, make easier to adopt some uh, values related to sexual norms and uh, other uh, 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 things so many concepts in which uh, family is important for so so socialization of uh, values however when we talk about specifically fertility uh, first uh, fertility is ex very important concept today because many societies many uh, European, especially European and Western countries, uh, experience a uh, decline in uh, fertility, which uh, uh, leads to uh, uh, population being more uh, older and older, and uh, which leads to many also economic, but also social problems. I mean, um, uh, so uh, according to the Neashmich, uh, there, there are biological, psychological and social factors that uh, are related to fertility and values are mostly uh, related to social factors. So, uh, for example, uh, that's uh, how people see children's role in, uh, influences fertility, how families see women's role, uh, uh, education, uh, social and religious norms, uh, attitudes towards a number of children. There are, these are all all basically values and they're according to the literature uh, related to fertility now i will uh, show you some specific uh, research on this uh, topic for example uh nikodem and bunyavac nikodem made the research about why do protestants have more uh, children than uh, catholics they mostly refer to protestant countries not necessarily protestants and uh, then as a group of people they thought they researched why for example some protestant countries in europe such as scandinavian countries have more children than for example italy with or uh, some other uh, mostly catholic dominated countries um so uh they uh, came to the conclusion that uh, uh most important factors that uh, correlate with fertility are age place of living like people from smaller towns uh, have uh, more children education they concluded that people with lower education actually have more children however they thought that religious religiosity uh, re gender roles uh, attitudes toward children so basically values uh, have lower correlation but still statistically significant and they asked uh, um, they questioned actually whether this concept actually are important for uh, researching for uh, for explaining um, lower fertility uh however uh there uh they did have uh, statistically significant results and also in many other research religiosity is um significantly and sometimes even highly um correlated with um, um uh, fertility so for example in uh, zhang uh, uh, have uh, uh, did the research and he got a positive correlation in various uh, between uh, fertility and um, religiosity in many uh, uh, across many denominations 
uh, Hayford and Morgan also uh, got positive correlation with both desired and actual number of children. So basically, um, religiosity also um, uh, correlated positively with the number of children. So basically, uh, what can explain, um, so we can basically conclude that uh, as far as religiosity, but religiosity is closely related to values. Uh, it is correlated, however, we don't know, um, maybe scientists don't agree on what uh, level, so is it high correlation or low correlation, and also uh, they might disagree on uh, um, interpretation of these results, so what uh, what does this actually mean? Also, uh, the difference between uh, this research can be explained by because in a Nicodem research, they compare just countries. So no, not but uh, in uh, other research they uh, compared uh, how much individual religiosity is uh, compared to is correlated with um, number of children. So my, maybe I mean we we don't know we don't have explicit research on this, but maybe. Um, um, uh, religiosity is uh, related to fertility on uh, individual level, so individuals who are more religious and uh, have more adopted more religious uh, values have uh, more children, but not, ser not necessarily countries that uh, uh, have uh, this uh, higher religiosity. So these are all just hypotheses and uh, more research is needed uh, here. However, um, um interesting uh, for me it was interesting to read the research of Freika and rest uh, who basically uh, concluded that liberal de denominations uh, uh, people in, in, um, from more liberal denominations have less children however catholics evangelical protestants and mormons have higher fertility and but amish for example have the highest now, Amish is not just a religious community, it's also a subculture that uh, lives in very specific way, uh, like uh, without technology, without with different norms and different values. And it obviously, um, uh, we can conclude here that uh, uh, their different uh, lifestyle actually benefited higher fertility. So maybe it uh, really is a high religiosity, but also maybe less, uh, less modern uh, we can say like that uh, um, way of living is uh, does benefit higher fertility which basically would explain why for example uh, historically western countries had, countries had higher fertility than today so maybe th these technological changes actually did uh, uh, cause uh, or, at, or at least are good predictors of decline of uh, fertility um, and also uh, in the Quillan research, uh, they find correlations of importance of motherhood. So it's not uh, and desired fertility, and it explains 6.4 percent of variance, which is actually uh, quite high uh, for such specific uh, values. So um, uh, obviously, uh, what we uh, see as important in life uh, actually does correlate with. Um, fertility so um definitely uh, uh, is uh, we can see some pattern here uh also there's uh, research uh, with some uh more with get some different results in some way than other research um alpina and tavares uh, had uh, did the research on fertility and values in italy and spain and actually and they analyzed it on uh, regional level so basically they saw for example that northern italy have higher uh, fertility rate than southern italy and they compared many different regions for both countries uh, they found that uh, increase in fertility is uh, related to high higher individualism with respect to relationship and higher individual uh, autonomy but also they found that increase in fertility happened in society with societies with lower individualism with respect to children now what does this mean uh, you might ask uh, individualism with respect to children it's basically um, um 
For example, when you have lower uh, individualism with respect to children, it basically means that you sacrifice your own needs uh, for your children. So um, we can say that um, uh, lower individualism, uh, so that um, people who value their children more than their own, uh, I wouldn't say selfish, but their own uh, desires and their own uh, needs, uh, luxuries and everything else uh, will probably be more, uh, uh, will more, will have probably more children. They also found the uh, result that equality of women in uh, 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 actually increase fertility, which is uh, um, some uh, some literature, some uh, say, um, some research uh, said that uh, differently. But obviously, uh, probably when women uh, have uh, more stability in their lives, uh, they certainly probably are more inclined to have uh, more kids, and uh, so we can say that. Uh, even though decline of gender roles uh, is uh, um, maybe leads to lower fertility, but also in uh, equality of women is beneficial for fertility. So there is like both sides. We everything is in social sciences have uh, different uh, sides, and we need to address all of them. Uh, so basically, um, equality of women women is also important to uh, have. Uh, higher fertility because women must be respected and they must feel uh, uh, equal and uh, that they have opportunities so all in on all, in on, all uh, more research is needed on all of these uh, topics um, and uh, uh, because results are different they're sometimes contradictory sometimes they're uh, they are more significant uh, statistically. Sometimes they're they are less, and uh, but the more research we have, the more uh, the bigger picture we will uh, get. So this is quite important. I can see that my time is running out. So um, I will just uh, shortly say about fertility in different countries. We have like so you can see countries with higher fertility. This is uh, from a World Bank source. Um, and we can see countries with the lowest. Uh, I actually, uh, okay, sorry, this is mistake. Uh, is Timor is higher. Um, so basically, we can see uh, that mostly African countries have higher fertility, and some uh, I, I listed the uh, non-African countries with high, highest fertility are is East Timor, Samoa, Yemen, Iraq, uh, and the lowest fertility have mostly East, Eastern Asian countries and. Mm -hmm. Uh, European ones, and we can see basically that uh, higher fertility is associated here uh, with uh, more traditional and more survival values, which means that modernization does uh, have some consequences on uh, fertility, lower fertility. And here is uh, uh, my sources, and uh, thank you all for for watching uh, my presentation.